In this video, I want to talk about the correct way to manage form state in ReactJS. So before I go ahead and talk about that, it's important to first understand what controlled and uncontrolled components are. So just remember this, that when we talk about controlled and uncontrolled components, it's always referring to components which are handling forms or form inputs in them. So how do we differentiate between a controlled and an uncontrolled component? So in short terms, in a control component, the form data is handled by a React component, which means that the entire form data is handled by the React state. Whereas in an uncontrolled component, the form data is handled by the DOM itself. And by DOM, I mean the useRef hook. So anytime we are utilizing the state and attaching it to the form inputs respectively, then any component utilizing state in the first place and has a form element and form input within it is basically a controlled component. And in uncontrolled component, we usually reference the individual inputs to the ref created by the use ref. So the ref we create holds a reference to each of the DOM element and they are responsible for managing the form data. So those components which do not have state but directly manipulate the DOM to manage form data, those are uncontrolled components. So first of all, I'm going to talk about control components. So what is the best way to manage state in control components or more like the recommended way to manage control components? So here you can see we have three inputs as well and they have type text and type email respectively. And I've given them a name of F name, L name and email. And there's a button submit over here as well, which refers to this button over here. And over here, I have an on submit, which references to the handle submit function created over here. I'll just close this for now. All right. So every time I click on the submit button, this on submit is invoked, which calls the handle submit and then everything within the handle submit gets executed. So now, first of all, how do I get the respective values of the input that I'm typing in? So if I'm typing in first name, last name, or your email, so how do I store those values in my state? So usually a bad practice is when someone tries to create individual states, let's say three individual states, three different states for each of these inputs. So something like a state named first name, another state named last name, and another state named email. So you shouldn't do that. You should not try to create extra state when it's not required. You should try to minimize it as much as you can. So in a situation like this, when you're dealing with a control component and you want to update the input values based on state, you should take the values from the input by creating only one state, let's say details in this case, and initializing it as an object. And then what I'll do is I'll create the object properties, which is nothing but F name, L name, and of course, email. All right. So these are initialized with an empty string and these names are similar to the name of the respective inputs and that is required because these two names need to be same the property name of the object and the name property of the input need to be same for us to be able to update it when we declare the state as an object like this to show you what i mean what i'll do here is i will first go to the input and i'll write here i'll select the on change property and to the on change of the input i'll pass the handle change function all right and i'll do the same for the other two inputs as well so every time I type on the input, the on change gets triggered and the handle change automatically takes the event from the on change. So whatever I'm typing is passed to the handle change as an argument. And to show you what I mean, what I'll do over here is this handle change is already taking an event as a parameter because on change automatically passes it to handle change. And then what I can do here is I can write set details. Basically, I'll set the state and I'll access the previous values, which is whatever details is currently holding. And then over here, I'll replace the details with a new object where I'll spread in all the previous values, which is all the previous values of the details along with the value that I'm currently changing. So I'll select e.target.name and I'll set it to e.target.value. All right, so this is where e.target.name comes handy. So because the F name and the F name over here, they both are same. So when I do e.target.name, e.target.name refers to this name over here. So within the object, I'm trying to select the e.target.name, let's say F name. And so it's going to search for F name in this object. It sees that F name is here. And because these two names match, it's going to be able to select the F name from the object and update it with the value that I'm typing in. All right. So that's why we keep the names over here of the object and the name of the input same, because in that way, we can easily access it using e.target.name and update its value rather than having to individually update these properties, which would become quite wordy and messy. All right. So now after doing that, what I can do here is I can simply console log the details. All right, so now if I save this and then over here, I type, let's say, explore DVD. And then in the last name, I type, let's say, ABCD. And then in the email, I type x at the rate g.com. 
and now if i submit you can see that we get something on the console and the console logs the details state so you can see in the details object i have explodivity the last name and the email so that means whatever i'm typing on the input i'm able to store each of those input values in our state itself so this is an example of a control component where we utilize the react state to manage the form data now how is this different from uncontrolled component but it's different because we can use this state to validate our inputs real time for example i'm not going to validate things right now but to show you an example what we can do is let's say i go down here so over here what i can do is let's say i'll create a p tag and i'll say your name is and i'll combine the details dot f name with nothing but details dot l name and of course i'll also give a little bit of space over here that's it all right so now you can see whatever i write over here for example let's say i'll refresh this so whatever i write over here let's say i write explodivity so your name is getting updated real time whatever type you can see your name is getting updated real time as i keep typing on the input so right now i'm just showing this to you as a dummy example but instead of displaying whatever i'm typing on the input itself you can do validations you can do real time validations so for example if someone forgets to add the add the rate in their email then you can display a text over here which says that the email is not formatted correctly and it will be shown to them real time even before they submit the form data so this is what you can do when you work with a control component and you're able to utilize the react state you're able to show values and do validations real time all right but now in an uncontrolled component i'll show you what happens in there so to convert this entire control component to an uncontrolled component what i'll do first is i'll remove this p tag because now we won't get any real time data since we'll be manipulating the dom directly so after that i'll remove this on change as well from here and from here as well and we don't require the name as well i'll remove the names and instead of that i can simply add placeholders for now so i can differentiate things i'll just add placeholder name this is not necessary but i'm just writing it to differentiate things last name would be first name and then another placeholder for email all right after this i'll remove the handle change function we don't require this in an uncontrolled component as well and i'll remove this as well the console log details and i'll remove this details state from here as well and i'll replace the use state with a use ref hook because if you remember i said in an uncontrolled component we use the dom to manage the form data and in react we get a reference to the dom by utilizing the use ref hook so i'll initialize this use ref by saying first name input ref will become use ref and i'll initialize it with a null and then i'll do the same thing for the other two inputs as well so this will become last name and this will become email so already you can see this is getting so much more lengthy as compared to the use state one now after this we get the value of the respective inputs while working with use ref what i have to do is i first have to attach a ref to each of the inputs so what i'll do here is i'll first write ref equals first name input ref because this is for the first name then i'll write ref equals last name input ref and ref equals email input ref so now we have a reference to each of the input and each of those reference are going to be stored in their respective use refs all right now to be able to access their values based on whatever we type in the handle submit over here right below the e dot prevent default i will let's say say const first name is equal to uh, first name input ref dot current dot value so to access the value from any ref we have to utilize the dot current property which the ref automatically has within it so to access the actual value the ref is holding we have to use the dot current dot value so i'll do the same for the other two this will be last name and this will be email and i'll replace this with last name input ref and this with email input ref now what i can do is i'll simply console dot log the first name and the other two values as well so this will be nothing but the last name and this will be the email all right so i'll just refresh this once all right so now if i type something let's say i write explodivity and then i just write something random and then a at the rate g dot com and then i submit then if i open my console you can see i get the three values first name last name and email so this means oh I just noticed i just forgot to change the name of control form to uncontrolled form when we started working with an uncontrolled component all right that's not an issue so now as you can see in the console log i'm getting the individual values for all the inputs even when we use the use ref and not the use state 
So this means by using useRef, I'm also able to get the input values. So the end result while handling the submit is the same. So for example, if I need to send this data to the API, we can get the input values in both ways by using useRef or useState, it doesn't matter. And we can send the value to the API. However, as you notice, there are some key differences between the two. For example, here in the uncontrolled component, I cannot do validation real time. Like I do not have any state which is going to re-render the component every time I type something on the input to show any real time validation. Because in useRef, the whole purpose behind useRef is it persists between state re-renders. So every time the state changes, the useRef remains the same and updating the value of the useRef variable doesn't re-render the component. So I'm not going to be able to see any real-time changes in the validation. So that would be a drawback in the user experience side. But in the control component, we were clearly and easily able to utilize validation because we were able to do real-time updates through the use of state in React. So I hope you got to understand the differences, the key differences between a controlled and an uncontrolled form component. So in this entire component, it's not like I cannot use state at all. I can use state, but it's important that you use refs for this to be called an uncontrolled component. So every time we utilize refs to manage the form data, only then it's called an uncontrolled component. That doesn't mean we cannot have state in here. Just that to manage the form data, we should be using ref. And that is when it becomes an uncontrolled component. So which one should we use when? Well, that completely depends. If you're already working on a pre-existing project, which let's say is a large application and people are already using state and we also require real-time validations, then it's good that you work with the state approach. I personally recommend the state approach, which is basically the control component approach. But if you're working on a small project or you do not have any specifications or use case to use the validation, then you can go with the uncontrolled component approach. So with that, that's all for the video. If you found it insightful, don't forget to like and subscribe.